Hi YouTube, this is Mike and this is part four of four in my series on craps math. This is the last video and this one is going to be going over simple bets that always resolve in one roll. In particular, bets on a total of two, three, 11, 12, seven, any craps and the field. Now the bets on two, three, 11, 12, and seven are self-explanatory. You may recall from part one that you, that a pass bet loses on a total of two, three, or 12, that's called crapping out. So a bet on any craps will win on any of those totals on two, three, or 12. And that pays seven to one. The two and 12 pay 30 to one, the three and 11 pay 15 to one, and any seven pays four to one. So I have bet $1 on each of these. My balance is now at 99.94, and let's roll the dice. Okay, everything lost, and fair warning, I'm gonna have to do some creative editing with this because these bets usually do lose. Okay, so we rolled a total of seven there, so the bet on any seven wins. I cut out, or I will cut out from this video, a bunch of losing rolls. At the time that I made the last bets, after the bets were made, I had $9,976. The any seven bet pays four to one, plus my original bet back means a total of $5 back to me. So my balance should be at $99.76 plus five, or $99.81 which it is. So let's make some, let's keep making the other bets. Okay, some bets later, after betting on the 2, 3, 11, 12, and any craps, my balance was at 99.61, and you can see that I just rolled a total of three. So. That bet on a total of three pays 15 to one, plus my original bet back means $16 back to me for that three. And a three wins on any craps, that pays seven to one, plus my original dollar back means $8 back to me. So 16 plus eight means um, that I get $24 coming back to me. As stated before, I had 99.61 in my rack after making those bets. You add 24 to that and you get 99.85. So that demonstrates how these bets work. We are now ready to do some math on the bets that I just demonstrated. Now, the bets on three and 11 are what are called easy hops. The player may actually bet on any specific roll of the dice, for example, a five and a four. Because those two numbers are different in a five and a four, it's called an easy hop because there are two ways that you can roll a five and a four because there are two ways you can order the two dice, a five and a four or a four and a five. This is also true of the one and the two and the five and the six. So let's look at the easy hops here. There are two ways to win any easy hop bet, like the three and the 11. For example, on the bet on an 11, you can roll either a five and then a six or a six and a five. As we know, there are six squared or 36 total ways to roll the dice, so there are 36 minus two or 34 ways you can lose that bet. So usually easy hops will pay 15 to one and losing is like winning negative one. If an easy hop bet pays 15 to one, then you can see in cell D E6 that the house advantage is 11.11%. Now to make matters even worse, some st stingy casinos will only pay 15 Four one, which is equivalent to fourteen two one. 
If they do that, then the house advantage goes up to 16.67%. And some casinos, like I think those in Australia are generous and pay 16 to one on the easy hops, that would lower the house advantage to 5.56%. But 15 to one is the standard, so let's keep the spreadsheet there. The hard hops are bets like a total of two and 12. They also include bets on a two and a two, a three and a three, and so on, as long as the two dice die faces are the same. So for example, with a bet on a 12, there's only one way you can win that, with a six and a six. And there are obviously 35 ways you can lose on that. Hard hops generally pay 30 to one resulting in a house advantage of 13.89%, which you can see in cell E13. So some stingy casinos only pay 34.1, which is like 29.21. That increases the house advantage to 16.67%. Now I think in Australia, they pay 33 to one, which lowers the house advantage all the way to 5.56%. So, but let's leave it at 32.1, which is the Vegas standard. So let's, next, let's look at the any seven bet. Uh, you may remember from the combinations sheet that there are six ways to roll a seven. So let's put that in for combinations. And there are 30 ways you can roll anything other than a seven. The any seven bet pays four to one for a house advantage of 16.67%, which you can see in cell E20. So that makes the any seven bet the worst bet on a standard, standard craps table. So how about the any craps? That wins on a total of two, three, and 12. So let's go back to the combinations sheet. There are there is one way to roll a total of two, two ways to roll a total of 12, and one way to roll a total of, excuse me, there is one way to roll a total of two, two ways to roll a total of three, and one way to roll a total of 12. Four, four ways that you can win that bet. There are 32 ways you can lose that bet. Their wins on that pay seven to one for a house advantage of 1.11%. So those are all the hot bets, all the sucker bets, I would say, um, in the middle of the table, not including the hard way bets, which are also sucker bets, but I covered those in part three of this series. So the only bet left to discuss is the field bet. We are finally ready to talk about the last bet that I am going to analyze, the field. This is another bet that always resolves in one throw. It wins on a total of two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, or 12, as you can see right here. On a total of two, it will pay two to one. On a total of 12, on this table, it will pay three to one. Some tables only pay two to one. And three, four, nine, 10, or 11 pay even money. And I'm gonna bet $5 each time. So here we go. A six loses, so let's go again. A seven loses. Seven loses. Four wins, that pays even money. Uh, my balance before I made the bet was at 99.85. So, so now it's at 99.90, reflecting that $5 in winnings. So let's go again, eight is a loser. Eight loses. Yay, a 12, 12 pays three to one. So before I made that bet, my balance would have been 99.35. After making the bet, it would have been 99.30. So the win is worth $15 to me, plus my original $5 back so that 12 was worth $20 to me. So that's the field. Can't think of anything else to say about it. So next let's um, go to Excel and do some math. 
And let's end this video by talking about the field a bit. I already started uh, a sheet for it. I just need to fill in the blanks. So as mentioned earlier in the video, the 12 pays three to one. At least it should uh, on a standard table. How many ways can you roll a total of 12? There's just one way for reasons that I just said. A total of two pays two to one. There is only one way to roll a total of two with a one and a one. And totals of three, four, nine, 10, and 11 pay even money. How many ways can you roll those? Well, let's go back to the combinations sheet. So we've got two ways on the three, three ways on the four, four ways on the nine, three ways on the 10, and two ways on the 11. So there are 14 ways that you can win even money on the field. So a total of five to eight will lose. So let's go back to our combination sheet and we can see, let's, let's sum the range of combinations from five to eight. So we can see that there are 20 ways you can lose and this total cell is not looking at the right range. So there we go, 36 possible combinations. A total of five to eight loses. So I'm gonna put in a negative one there. And this cell is wrong, let's fix that. And there we go. We can see 36 total combinations. So that looks right. The probability column totals to one and cell E6 represents the player's expected value of negative 2.78%. In other words, a house advantage of 2.78%. Now, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, but if not, I will now, that some casinos in Las Vegas, perhaps half of them on the strip, only pay two to one on the 12. If they do that, then let's see what happens. Changing that three to a two doubles the house advantage to 5.56%. So if you'd like to bet the field, I recommend looking for a casino that pays three to one on the 12. So that's the field and that's, that's it. Um, I have, between the four videos, I have covered most of the bets and craps. Let me quickly address some that I didn't cover. I did not cover come bets and don't come bets. Those are mathematically equivalent to pass and don't pass bets. So I don't need to repeat myself on those. I did not cover horn bets or whirl slash world bets because those are combinations of other bets that I've already talked about. For example, the horn bet is just a combination bet on the two, three, 11, and 12. And I have already covered those individually. So if you wanna know about the horn bet, just analyze the two, three, 11, and 12 bet individually and take the average of those house advantages to get the overall house advantage on the horn bet. And I also don't cover some very rarely made bets like place to lose bets. But I think that if you've watched these videos, you will understand that math is not that mathematically complicated and you will be able to analyze any other craps bet that you might find that is based on the standard craps game. Now, some bets like, um, what's it called? The fire bet, that is very mathematically complicated. And I might get into that in a future video, but it's beyond the scope of, of these right now. So, I can't think of anything left to say, except thank you for watching. If you like this video, uh, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Better yet, subscribe to my channel. Please leave your comments in the comments section below, which I check from time to time. And I have plenty of other gambling videos. I hope that you'll check those out. And meanwhile, I plan to make other instructional videos on the math of other games. I think the next one I'm going to do is Sickbo. So let me quit talking here and hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in another, in another video. This is the wizard saying goodbye.